Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the team here of the New Art School and Design Deduct podcast. Our guest today is Christer Hedberg. Welcome, Christer. Hi, thank you. Nice to be here. It's fantastic to have you. So tell us about you and your work. Uh, my name is Christer Hedberg. I live in Gothenburg, Sweden. Um, I've been working in the creative industry for 20 four years, I believe. I used to work at, and be a partner at, a, at an ad agency called Stendals. Uh, I sold that part, my part in that, and set up my new company called Anne Friends a year ago. And I had a lot of work, a lot of fun at work. What, what I do is uh, for the last 10 years at the ad agency, I worked as a facilitator to try to find better ways of working and how to challenge the, the given sort of on how we work and how we work with clients and how we create stuff. So that's what I um, took away. And um, just when I founded the uh, uh, and Friends agency, just to, to run with that and have even more fun with that and just challenge even more. So I do a lot of design sprints. I facilitate creative sessions and team sessions and yeah. Having fun at work, that's what it's all about, right? That's extremely exciting. So tell us about what you're doing right now. Um, right now, uh, the, the big thing at the moment, you know, the COVID situation here. So this Saturday, in four days, uh, there's a musical camp starting here in Gothenburg for 2,500 kids and youth who play classical music. Wow. And they were supposed to, to come here to play with the Gothenburg Symphonics. But that is, of course, just cancelled. So five weeks ago, I got the question of, so we have to close this down. What can we do instead? Can we do something instead? And what should we do? So, so I did a design sprint with the team. And we came up with the sort of given to do a digital version of it, a re fully remote camp. So for the last four weeks, it's just crazy to take that four day, super intense, super tactile um, camp and make it into an engaging, fun, uh, something that they can learn something from uh, and in a fully remote setting, but it's fun. So we are a team of, in my team, I believe we are 10 people and Gothenburg Symphony has got like 10 people working in there. And then there's some guys who are programming a platform in four weeks. And on Saturday, we start. So, yeah, it's full force ahead. Keep us posted. Keep us posted on that. And, and, yeah, and, and, and the thing is not to make it a, like from the Gothenburg Symphony to the kids. It's going to be like it's really about making it a two-way uh, communication with their instruments and singing. Yeah, crazy, but fun. Amazing. So tell us about your journey into teaching. Um, my journey into teaching, to me, it was, I got a question six, seven, eight years ago about lecturing at the, the local uh, ad school. And I just jumped on that because I really believe that, uh, I mean, I'm absolutely standing on the shoulders of giants, people who have been kind to me and, and share their knowledge and share their passion. That's what sparked me over the years. So I was really happy about that. Of course, I wanted to, to lecture there. And that turned into me being really engaged in that school with the, all, the, all the creative students. That I, um, it's called Yurko, a fantastic school, just a couple of kilometers from where I'm standing at the moment. Um, and I, I truly believe you should share your knowledge. It's not, you know, knowledge is, it's only worth so much if I keep it to myself. I believe the world is a better place when we share stuff. Truly believe that. Uh, and everything I know I've stolen from someone else. So why don't I let the other ones steal from me? So that's the first thing I said to them. So when I, I lecture sort of, these are my ideas. This is where I stand at the moment. Take whatever you want, steal whatever you want, remix as much as you like uh, and make it your own because your job is to push me out of this industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm stupid enough to teach them how to push me out of this industry. <laughs> but then again, that's what it's all about, right? To, to empower people. 
Absolutely. And I, I, I love that. I love to see, you know, there's a, an old, is it Morrissey song or is it Smith song? I don't know. I hate it when, my, when our friends become successful. I always twist that around. I love it when our friends become successful. So, yeah, it is sort of what I, what I stand for and my true core beliefs that I've, the world is better if we share stuff. So that's my a super long question, answer to a really not simple not question. All, not all. I mean, in a way, all of us, every, every one of us is unique. So it's yeah. about competition because you are unique, you know, and everybody's unique and they got a unique mix of, of, of things to bring to the table anyway. Uh, so your journey is in advertising. Uh, that's where I started. Um, before that, I was a, a mechanical engineer. Wow. So I'm, I'm trained as a mechanical engineer. I worked for a year. Super boring. So, and where I worked, they, they used to be three small sing, uh, single person agencies next door. So I spent more time in there. So after a few months, I said, well, why don't you quit that job and start working in here instead? And this is something like 30 years ago now. Wow. But then so, you make brilliant designers because, because there are transferable skills that are, that are very, absolutely. very linked. I mean, the first step I took in, into the creative world was to be a, an illustrator. Mm -hmm. So from there, sort of into art direction. And just because I'm a curious bastard, I trained to become a copywriter. Um, yes. Just by accident, I had to be a project manager, which I suck at, really. Uh, so now I know that uh, I'm not, not a good project manager. And from sort of seeing that the agency I was a partner in was 150 people strong. So, I mean, it is like huge organism. Uh, and to see how, how creatives work, then, you know, when, when the friction came and the frustration came. So that's where I started to go into more like facilitation and how, how teams work and how creativity works. Like breaking down that myth of the fantastic, brilliant creative. Of course. Because of course. it is a myth. Of course. I mean, we have, we have a similar journey. Uh, I started uh -huh. as, an, as an illustrator. Uh, what uh -huh. illustration were you into? Uh, well, I started sort of technical illustration because that's where I came from. So I had the clients in there. And then basically everything the, the clients asked for me. But that, uh, I started there for, for years, something like that. And then sort of transferred into the ad agency who brought me in which I became a partner in later or later on. Brilliant. So you've, you've seen uh, a good amount of, of change. Uh, in, in the oh, world. yeah. Uh, and how would you sort of, uh, what would be your best advice uh, for aspiring designers uh, that want to enter into, into that world? To be curious. I mean, that's, Basically, everything that kept me going or taking me to where I am is my uh, almost to the level of being annoyingly uh, curious, but curiosity and, and, and to, to be inspired, to let yourself be inspired by a lot of things, not just the, because I see a few, I've seen examples of people going, I'm, this is where I'm going, so I'm just going to investigate this field, right? And to me, it's like, I need to be inspired by all things. And that's what has taken me to where I am. And I absolutely over the last three months, you know, with the COVID situation, to, to be able to just dive into all crazy projects like the one with the Gothenburg Symphony now. It's like an orgy of connecting things that I've investigated or been interested in or had a look at over the years now. This comes together and so you can solve things that, other people say it can't be done. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a really shitty thing to say to me. It can't be done because then I have to show them that it can be done, right? So yeah, so to, to be curious and to also to, to be kind to yourself. I saw this brilliant uh, quote of Arthur Ashe, the old tennis pro, uh, and I just brought it up here. Start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. And I believe that's, that says it all, right? So start where you are. This is the knowledge I have at the moment. Don't pretend to be this amazing, fantastic one because people will call you out and use what you have. 
it's fantastic where you stand and do what you can. Just do something, keep moving. So keep the momentum and, and do something. You can always do something. Absolutely. That's my so advice. Discussion around education. Uh, is there something that you'd like to do differently? Or of course you, you are doing very different things, but the, in, in the in this sort of established way of, of educating, uh, in the more established uh, organizations, is there something that you, you'd want to, to change or do differently? Hmm. If I go back over the last couple of years, what I would like more organizations to do, and I know I, I challenge myself to do that more as well, sort of to involve more people, to make it more participatory, not to have that. I mean, I, I, I've heard teachers who sort of, I am the expert. I am standing up here sharing my knowledge, my expertise, and that's bullshit, right? And, and to me, the students of today, they don't accept that. They want to be involved. They want to be part of sort of the learning experience and, and to, to challenge that. So, and that goes for in the teaching sphere, but also in the organizational sphere, like, so can we do more in, the, in when we create stuff? Can we do it more together with the clients? And don't be afraid of that because there's knowledge in all parts there. Instead of being that fantastic uh, uh, genius who comes up with this idea. Can we be a genius together? Can we be a senior? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in the teaching world, to be more, I mean, listen to, to the crowd. It's almost like, a, to me, teaching is like a good, really good workshop. I mean, listening as a facilitator to the room, to, to the vibe, to where everyone, uh, where they're standing, where they're going. So I'm, I would like to see more of that in, in the teaching environment as well. Mm. Sort of co-create it. Absolutely. Uh, how have you found this uh, approach? Because um, in education, design education, we create an experience. Yeah, yep. it's, it's not like transfer of information. It's the experience of the students, the experience. And how have you found uh, recreating or transmitting that uh, experience uh, through online uh, means? So transferring it into the remote world? Yes. It is, it is a different beast. Uh, to some extent, it is exactly the same. And to some extent, it is a completely different beast to do it remotely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, just this. I usually don't talk with my hands a lot, but as soon as I stand before this camera, yeah. I'm sort of. I have to give more energy, and I have to rethink the the way we're doing things. Of how long can I keep uh, the the group in in front of me? Uh, engaged in this setting? Do I need to give them a task, which is to turn off the camera and go out and take a walk and come back in 30 minutes? Sort of, can we blend it? Not just keep it like a Zoom learning experience. Zoom is just the, the room for me. Uh -huh. um, so uh, yeah, I have to rethink a lot about how to keep people engaged and then to make it more in chunky bits. Um, but then again, sort of, and the similar part, when COVID struck here in, in Sweden, I was asked to um, do a week with the creative students to, to sort of how can we work now as a class um, in this situation? Mm -hmm. And I got the question on Thursday, late, late, late Thursday night, and on Monday morning, the, the class started. So there wasn't really up at all any time to prepare something. But then again, I went into it. This is the situation we are in. Let's make this together this week. What are your needs? Where, where are you standing? Uh, what are the problems you face? Because they have done one week of just trying it out. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they said is, Krista, in this situation, we don't want a fake, just funny assignment. We want something that matters to us. Cool. So. Now that's a switch in my head. Okay, cool. So what matters to you? Let's dive into that. So, and that 
flipped the whole week, my whole plan, just on only 30 minutes into <laughs> to the week, just flipped it. Okay, cool. So, so what, what matters to you? And it turned into a fantastic week of them creating stuff for organizations that matters to them or matters that matter to them. So it come really, I mean, they were super engaged. On Friday, when we finished that class, um, one of the groups, when they presented said, well, uh, earlier today, we contacted this organization, which was all about domestic violence. And they are running the campaign on Monday. Wow. Hey. So I, I had a Monday morning, I had planned to do a fun, engaging, uh, uh, basically a fun week of trying out tools. And they said, uh, we want to do something that really matters to us. Cool. So that sort of, uh, that's where they found the energy and out came at least one campaign two days later. Brilliant, right? Brilliant. So, so to me, that, that's sort of, I believe every class should be like that. But then again, as long as I can come convey the, the uh, knowledge or, or the, the, um, the skills they need to have that, but they sort of did it themselves during that week. So, and you asked me about the, the um, remote world. Mm, mm, mm. Use all the tools you can have. You, uh, that's available to you. There's plenty of amazing stuff, but don't overdo it. That's sort of for, for, for us as teachers. Keep it really simple and focus on the, the content and focus on keeping the group engaged and ask them what they need to be engaged. That's where I stand today. How can our uh, viewers and listeners find you? They can find me on my website, uh, and friends, one word, dot se. If you're in Sweden, you can subscribe to my uh, weekly newsletter, which is sent out, of course, because I'm just a, an annoying bastard on the worst day of sending out emails. So I do it every Sunday because everyone said that can't be done. Once again, you can't say that to me. So I, for, for the last 140 weeks, I've sent out a newsletter every Sunday with, with three things that inspires me at the moment. Wow. And you can find that uh, on my website as well. Subscribe to that Brilliant. on Instagram or LinkedIn, Krister Hedberg or andfriends.se. Fantastic, fantastic. Any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Have fun. Mm. Uh, the, the corporate world can be really stuck up. Having uh, remote meetings can be really, this is serious now. Um, and you know, when you are in your fourth meeting in a day, in a row of p 10 people sitting like this, you get fed up. So have fun with it. At least bring some joy, bring some energy into it uh, because that is the key to a lot of good things happening and ideas knocking about and learnings to be taken. So have fun, dare to be funny, dare to have fun with stuff. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much for a fantastic conversation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All the best.